Hi Deep Freeze Nation. Tonight I'm going to talk about testing your blue tips transmitter and potentially the receiver if you have it as well. There are a couple different techniques you can use for testing and just some pointers um, to help ensure that that testing you're, you're really doing the correct thing and you're really finding out what distance you can actually be at with your blue tips transmitters. So here we go, we'll jump right into it. I have my phone, iPhone 5S here. Um, we have scanning turned on and our Bluetooth is turned on. We are searching for all devices. Um, transmitter here. You can see the phone goes off. And you can also hear my receiver in the background. Now, the receiver, when the transmitter goes off, the receiver actually will blink and beep for 15 times. It's about 15 seconds, and then it'll turn off, just like that. The thing with the receiver, now I'm going to turn the scanning off on my phone. Scanning is off. As long as this is tipped up, the receiver is going to keep going off. We tip it down, that's when we see that stop after 15 seconds. However, if it tipped back up right now, it's just going to continue to beep. I just want to demonstrate this because there's an issue you can see with your phone here if you're not um, sure what to expect. So we'll turn the transmitter off. I'm not sure what we caught this on. It's either going to blink and be 15, 30, 45 seconds. Looks like it was just 30. So there we go. That's done. We're going to turn this off. You hear the beeping three times and blinking three times when you turn it off. Now we turn our phone back on. When you tip this up, you hear the alert. We're going to dismiss that. Now, if we tip this up again within 10 seconds, our phone is not going to go off because of some code that is built into the mobile app. You need to let that sit down and turn itself off for at least 10 seconds. So I'll just demonstrate that here. Tip it up again. Now we hear the phone go off. So the reason I'm showing you that is because if you're out on the lake and you test at say 50 yards and you hear it go off and then you hit dismiss and you're still scanning, it's picking up that signal within that whole time frame. So after you hit dismiss, I would actually recommend to then click no scanning, walk a little bit further, wait at least that 10 seconds, and then turn on the scanning again. Just to be safe, wait 15 seconds safely so you know you've eclipsed that 10 seconds. That way, it, the app can reset itself and you can do another test. Now, the other thing I'm going to recommend too is if you just leave a tip up sitting up with a transmitter on it, for the first 15 seconds, that transmitter transmits at a very high rate. After 15 seconds we slow it down in order to save battery within the transmitter. So as it sits up for 15 seconds it'll transmit very fast. And that's we did that so your phone can catch that signal. It's more likely to catch that signal. Um, after 15 seconds it slows down. So if you just leave it tipped up in your testing you know, after 15 seconds, the transmissions are going to become less frequent coming out of here, and you're going to be less likely to pick up that transmission. So if you're testing, I usually recommend testing with a partner because they can sit there and flip it up for you exactly when you want them to. You can wait your 10 seconds. You can tip the transmitter down whenever you need to. Um, it just works out much easier to test that way. Can you test by yourself? Yes, you can, but it's, it's a lot more difficult. Um, so those are some of the testing tips that I would give you just to see how far you can actually use the Blue Tips transmitters at. Like I said, the receiver, it's a little bit easier to do because you don't need to wait that 10 seconds in between when your transmitter has been tipped up. Um, and then after you get your testing done and you kind of find the range um, that you can be just some pointers for general usage one situation where you can use blue tips is obviously when you're just sitting outside jigging on a bucket um, if you have the receiver 
I would recommend positioning the receiver somewhere in the middle of your tip-ups. If you don't have the receiver, I would re recommend trying to position yourself in between your tip-ups. Let's say you have um, a triangle of tip-ups. I would not recommend sitting on the outside by one tip-up right next to you and then have the other two way out there. I would try and sit, you know, in between them all so you're the equidistant from each transmitter. Um, that way you have the best shot of catching a successful transmission from any tip-up. And again, honestly, the worst place that you can keep your phone, unfortunately, for wireless signals is in your pocket. Outside, you know, that may be your only option. So, you know, test those distances with the phone in your pocket. Get someone to tip up that flag. Maybe when you're sitting on the bucket, just so you'll know that where the tip up is, you're going to have a successful transmission. Now, if, you, if we're talking about in a permanent check or a portable, um, it's different because now we can kind of leave our phone out. If we're in a permanent, I would recommend positioning your phone within the window. Um, usually, permanent shacks obviously have either shed steel walls or aluminum walls, and that can really, really degrade the wireless signal. So the more we can keep it out, out from behind our body, out from behind those walls, the better. So a window is really a perfect place. Um, for the permanent shack, really, the receiver is a really good thing because this can be elevated, mounted outside your permanent, and then this will catch the signal and it will also pass it back onto your phone. So at that short distance, it's very easy for it to get through the shed steel. I would still recommend putting your phone in the window just because it increases our odds of getting that successful transmission. Um, now early ice, this time of year, a lot of guys are fishing in the portables. So in the portable, it, same thing with the receiver. If, if you have the receiver, it's definitely gonna, gonna be beneficial for you. Just get that mounted outside, either on a PVC pole as high as you can, um, or just up in one of the upper pockets of your portable. If you don't have uh, the receiver, then again, try and get that phone out of your pocket, get it up in a, get it up in one of the pockets of the portable, and then it's gonna, going to much easier catch the signal from uh, one of your blue tips transmitters. Um, so that's some of the tips I have for you tonight. We've been getting some questions, obviously, because people have been getting our blue tips as Christmas presents now, and that's totally understandable. Um, we sell a, a great tip up alert, but they're like any electronics device, there's a learning curve for them. And if you guys have any questions, I just encourage you to email brad at deepfreezefishing.com. I will take care of any of your problems. We'll try and walk you through it so you get the best performance. Um, we want you guys to be happy with the product, so we'll help you however we can. Um, if there's any other questions, concerns, shoot them right over to me at brad at deepfreezefishing.com. Thank you.